I guess it's time to turn the camera back on. I just caught this really nice, look at the size of this pre-spawn fish. She's an absolute toad. She ate that pink chatterbait. We'll get some pictures of her and get her back in the water. Well, you've probably guessed it. This is going to be another pink video. Hey everybody, it's Jay Ball, Blue Days Outdoors. Hopefully you guys are having an awesome day. And we're down in the basement today. Uh, trolling motor is still not fixed on the nitro and it's a little bit breezy today. I was gonna do some bank fishing, but I've been getting a lot of questions lately on how I make my pink bladed jigs. Uh, for those of you that have been following along with me since the very beginning, or for those of you that are new, you may not know this, but hands down, my absolute favorite bait to throw that I have tied on all year long, whether it's spring, summer, fall, bank fishing, I always have some sort of pink bladed jig tied on. This is actually the Berkeley slobber knocker. So here's a picture or here's, here's what it looks like before and after. And what I want to do is I want to show you how I take the pink spike it dye. This is the blade dip and then also the uh, dip and glow and how I actually make these bladed jigs and then also show you how I make my favorite trailer as well. One of my favorite trailers is these Rage Menace, these Pearl White Menace trailers that I dipped in pink. You can see I've got a few already dyed pink, which I'll show you how I do that. But before we get into actually how I, I dip these and show you some, share some tips and tricks with you, check out a few of my favorite fish catches from the past two years. Uh, these again, these are bladed jigs. So I've got the slobber knocker that I use. I use the motion seeker quite a bit. And then I also use the Z-Man jackhammer as well. So check out some of these awesome fish catches and why you should uh, probably try to throw some sort of pink bladed jig in the near future, maybe this fall or maybe even next spring. And some of you guys are going to thank me later. So check out some of these awesome fish catches. And then I will show you how to make your very own pink bladed jig. Stay tuned. <clears throat> Oh man, big bass, big bass, dude. That's a nice one. That is a nice one. Holy crap. Boy, he followed that thing all the way to the boat too. Ready? Yeah. All right guys, so Dylan and I are in this kind of new area we've never fished before. And I just picked up the pink motion uh, bladed jig and this bass just absolutely crushed this thing. I got a pink lure lipstick, paddle tail. Look at the size of this bass, guys. Yeah, holy crap. That's a nice one. Yeah, it is. Heck yeah. All right, guys, we're gonna get this beautiful fish back in the water. Man, it's awesome. Brand new sp spot, Dylan and I have never fished here before. And our first fish is a nice four pounder. So we're gonna get this fish back. Let her fight another day. Bye bye. folks holy crap on the pink motion fishing swim jig check that one out guys that is an absolute beast got that check this fish out guys look at that beautiful hue that's probably about a three and a half maybe four but check that out on that motion motion fishing company uh swim jig with the lure lipstick paddle tail. Check that out, guys. Nice, beautiful fish. I'm gonna get a few pictures, but man, that's a that's a tanker there, guys. Man, that was, uh, I was just thinking maybe I should get a jig and let it sit on bottom, you know, flip a jig or something, but let that chatterbait or that bladed jig hit the bottom and he absolutely smashed it. So we'll get some pictures and get this fish back in the water. How golden that fish is. Look at the colors on that one. Man, that's a pretty one. Look at the eye on it. Man, another beautiful pre-spawn. Just beautiful golden colors. I gotta, I gotta get some pictures of this one. This one's really pretty. What was one there? That's a nice one. I guess it's the first time. Yeah, that's a pretty fish there. Ooh, that's a chunky one. He missed it the first time. I thought it was a reed. Check that one out. Another beautiful pre-spawn female. Look how thick she is. Look at the girth on that one. Guys, pink chatterbait is fire today. Cannot be afraid to throw a pink chatterbait. Beautiful, beautiful fish. Gotta love Northern Michigan springtime fishing. I'm the only one up here too. Everyone's out walleye fishing today because today's the opener of walleye, but beautiful fish. Get her back in the water.
Pretty cool, right? I, I really hope that you are not opposed to throwing some sort of pink bladed jig, whether it's this fall or even next spring or next summer. I use it in clear water, I use it in dirty water, I use it on calm days, I use it on windy days. It looks nothing like what everyone else is throwing. I think that's why the fish key in on it. I understand bass probably can't see pink, but it looks different in the water than when everybody's throwing, and that just, I think, draws more bites. So let me share some tips and tricks with you and show you how I actually make my pink bladed jigs. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is order some of this Spike It Blade Dip. I'm gonna leave a link to this stuff. I get all my Spike It dye products from Tackle Warehouse. So you're gonna want the pink blade dip, and then you're also gonna want the pink uh, dip and glow as well. So the pink blade dip is gonna be for the head of the bait, and then also the blade, and then we're going to dip the skirt in this uh, dip and glow. And you do not want to get the blade dip on the skirt because this the blade dip is lacquer based and it's thick and it'll actually clump up on the skirt and you won't be able to get that stuff off. So we're just gonna hop right in. One take, hopefully. We're not gonna I'm not gonna hopefully make any mess ups. So first thing you want to do is you want to take your bladed jig out of the box. And what I try to do with the slobber knockers is you can see how that skirt is a little bit wrapped up and I just think that's from the manufacturing process. What I'll actually do is just take the time and separate all of these little individual strands so that I get as much dip and dye or as, I get as much dye inside the skirt as possible. So let me do this real quick and uh, I'll just cut right through this and get to the get to the fun stuff. All right, one last clump here. Yeah, you can see how I've got to just kind of separate these they're just stuck together again i think it's either from the manufacturing process or just from shipping but i want to make sure i get as much dye in between the skirt as possible so let's take a look and see you'll be able to tell there'll be a lot more openness to it there might be a few stuck together here or there now you can see a majority of those that skirt is separated so First thing you want to do is on the blade itself, you can see some fingerprints. Okay, there might be a little bit of residual oil. You could probably rub this with some alcohol uh, to get the fingerprints off in the oil. And the reason why you want to get it clean is so that the lacquer actually sticks to it because this is a really smooth surface. And if you don't, it'll actually not coat there very well. So what I'm going to do just for essence of time is I'm just going to rub my cloth right here on the blade and on the head to try to get all the fingerprints off and any maybe residual oil, again, maybe from the skirt or from the manufacturing process. We just wanna get it as, as clean as possible. So I'm not gonna to try to touch the, the head, but you can see there's no more fingerprints on it, right? It's good and clean. So again, like I mentioned, this is the blade dip. This is a lacquer based, so it's very thick and you do not wanna get the skirt on it. So hopefully you guys are gonna be able to see this, but what I do, as I take the slobber knocker itself, I pull all the skirt back as far as I can, and then I grab it by the hook. So this way I can dip the head in the dye and not get any of the skirt. So it's not that complicated. I just I wanna make sure you guys can see it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, again, take the blade dip, and I'm gonna dip this in, and that's it. So what I what I do is I dip it a couple of times to get the head. So you can see I'm getting up on the head. If we're getting close, I try to get right to the top of the the head where it meets the skirt. So let me just dip this in here and show you. See, so you can see we're we're pretty close. Probably one more dip will get us there. There we go. Nice. Look at how pink that already is. See how pink that is. I'm gonna dip the head one more time to get another coating on the head. Again, this is lacquer based, so it is thick. All right, so this does take a little bit of time to dry, but you can see it's pretty evenly coated. There's a little bit left on the tip at the end of the blade, so what I'll do is I'll just kind of wipe that off a little bit. Again, I don't wanna to touch it, and that's pretty, pretty consistent. You're gonna get some waves. It's not gonna be perfectly smooth, but there you go. So now we've got the head dipped. So what I'm gonna do is just 
let this hang right here on the edge of my water container. No, maybe not. Probably should draw this blow on it. But to get it dry. Stay tuned. It will be kind of tacky for a little bit too. But this is really what it's like. I mean, I'm going to cut some of this out. But this, this is, yeah, this is making content for YouTube. Hopefully you guys don't mind. Again, I know I don't have cool edits, cool music. But if you guys just want to talk about fishing, about how to make pink baits, hit the subscribe button. I'd appreciate it. So, oh, it's still a little bit tacky. Hold, please. Now, while this is drying, I just want to make you aware. So because this is lacquer-based, it does get inside all the little components and the areas inside the slobber knocker <clears throat> itself or whatever bladed jig. So what that's going to do is it's going to deaden the sound of this, right? Before, this has a really high-pitched sound to it. But once you start to coat it and you get that lacquer inside the components, it's a much duller sound. Does it affect on the bait or not? I'm not sure. It's pretty noisy just in general because of how much water this thing does dissipate. But um, I haven't noticed any difference in fish catches since I've been, I mean, any reductions. If anything, because I've been dipping the blade before, I was just dipping the, uh, the tail and the skirt. But ever since I've been dipping the entire thing pink, I've been getting a lot of bites. So, yeah, I, it does change the sound. It's not as loud now. It's more of a more of a thud, but maybe that'll help. It doesn't seem to hurt. So that's pretty dry, actually. So you can see just how pink that blade is. You can see at the top there where the where the dye was running off. There's a little bit of waviness. It's not going to matter. Uh, but yeah, so that's how you get the head itself dyed. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the dip and glow and we are going to dip the skirt. Now something that you might want to have is, is a little uh, little brush. This is just a little paint brush. And what I like to do with this is when I get the skirt inside of the container, I like to kind of take this brush and get the top of the skirt as well. I want to make this thing as pink as possible. So again, make sure all your strands are pulled loose. There's none, none that are really stuck together. Looks like there's a few that are stuck together. Again, don't have to, but this is just uh, me being uh, the way I am. So here we go. We're going to pull all the skirt down, okay, and we're, we're going to get it wrapped up tight. And then what we're going to do is we're going to feed the skirt into the jar of dye itself. And you'll see why I've got the brush here in a second, because the, the skirt doesn't get all the way into the dye itself. So I'm just going to slowly drop it in, and then I'm going to set the jig so it balances so there now you can see why I want the brush because not all of the skirt gets in the bottle so I'll take this little brush and what I'll do with the brush is I'll dip the brush down inside the dye and I'll bring the dye up and start painting the top of this right and it, there's probably more efficient way to do this right but I just want to show you guys how I go about doing it you gotta be careful too because this this dip and glow stuff it'll stain I mean my tabletop here is stained pretty well this is acetone based, so depending on the rubber or the soft plastic that you dip this into, it will melt the uh, rubber itself or the skirt. So you can't leave it in here too long. That's why this stainless steel bucket right here you see is full of water. Because what I'm going to do is once I get done dyeing this, I'm going to dip it in the water to kind of neutralize the, the acetone effect. So there you go. Within about 30 seconds, you can see that we have got that pretty well dyed. Now you can see all that excess dye in the bottom. All we're going to do is take it, dip it in the water, and again, kind of neutralize the acetone effect itself. All right. So I'm, let me dry this off real quick, and then I'll, I'll show you guys what this looks like. Alrighty, look at that. Look at how pink that slobber knocker is. Really, really, really pink. About as pink as you can get it. So... Uh, let's let's wrap this video up. Let me show you how I uh, dye my favorite trailer of all time. This is a Strike King uh, Rage Pearl Menace trailer, and I absolutely love these things. I actually rigged them 
uh, vertical, so the tails kick back and forth like this, like a fish. Uh, Alex Rudd uh, from Alex Rudd Fishing taught me that trick, so big shout out to Alex. And if you haven't seen the full video on how I dip a lot of my soft plastics, I'll leave that link up in the uh, upper right-hand corner or left-hand corner, so you guys can check that out. But little little tip and trick on the soft plastics. So I like to dip about I don't know more than a third, maybe not so much a half of these Pearl Menace trailers in the Spike It die. And there's a little trick that I, I show in the full video, and I'll show you guys right now. But I take this little finishing nail, this little, like, I don't know if it's a penny size nail or whatever finishing nail. And what I do is I stick the head of the nail into the top of the bait so that all I have to do is hold on to the head. Now, these baits in, in particular, I'm not dipping all the way up to the head, but you have to be careful because if that die gets into that nail hole, it actually opens it up because it's acetone based, and then the bait falls in the container. And it's not fun trying to get a bait out of one of these containers. Trust me, that's um, uh, words from personal experience. So it's real easy. I usually dip these for about 20 seconds. So you're just going to dip the Pearl Menace trailer in. Dip it in just like that. And again, it only takes about 10 to maybe 20 seconds max. Again, it's acetone based. So it will melt it if you leave it in there too long. But you can already see uh, that is really, really pink. So we'll... Go ahead and pull that out check that out and then again just like before i'll dip it in the water to neutralize the effect of the acetone and there we have it so in the matter of five minutes or so we have now taken a white berkeley slobber knocker and turned it pink with the blade dip and the dip and glow and then we took this menace trailer and we turned it pink as well Again, really easy to do this. Uh, these are by far, hands down, my favorite go-to lures I have tied on all year. I've played around with some pink lemonade with adding some chartreuse. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this, this pretty short video on how to make a pink bladed jig. Please, you have got to try this bait. I know bass can't see pink in the water. I get that. But there's just something about this color that drives bass absolutely nuts. They just cannot, they can't look away. They have to have it. So really do appreciate you guys hanging out with me during this short um, Blue Jays Gems Tips and Tricks video. If you guys haven't already, please hit the subscribe button. Channel is growing really well. We just hit 2K followers. We really do appreciate the support. My goal this year was to hit about 5,000 followers, but um, you know it's been a little bit slow. But I do appreciate everyone's support, all the questions, comments, suggestions. So again, thank you so much for your support from the bottom of my heart. And remember, the easiest way to change your attitude is by showing gratitude. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the water next time.